Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for another Ham Shack chat. This time, we're going to be doing a, well, semi-deep dive with the FT891 and the SSB mode using your standard MC31 microphone that came with your rig. Microphones hidden on lipstick, lipstick hidden on microphones. Mm -hmm. We're going to discuss the receive settings, and then we'll move on to transmit settings. And finally, I'll discuss the benefits of using the RT Systems radio programming software. The Automatic Gain Control, or AGC system, is designed to help with fading or other propagation effects. In a moment, we're going to take a look at the menu settings, but for now, we're going to open up our function menus, and click through to function 2. We're going to pick AGC, turn that on, and we're going to make sure that we are in auto mode. Now we're going to get out of the function screens and press and hold to get back to our normal screen and then press and hold again to open up the menus. We want to go all the way up to section 1 and we're going to select AGC slow delay. Now we want to ensure that it is on the default value of 3000 milliseconds. If it isn't, we can select that and adjust where we need it, but we want it on 3000. As a general note, the AGC selections are applied based on your selected mode. With auto selected, as we've just done in the CW, FM, and Data FM mode, the rig will use your FAST setting. In RIDI, Data LSB, and Data USB modes, your rigs will use your MID settings. And on LSB, USB, and AM modes, your rig will use the slow setting, which is our concern for this video. Now we're going to rotate our multifunction knob to section 11 and menu item 9, which is our SSB transmit bandpass filter. If you plan on doing DX or contesting, you want a very narrow filter. So you would select the narrowest one, which is 400 to 2600 hertz. If you're doing more general operations, like a rag chew, which is what we'll set the rig up for today, you'll want to have a wider bandpass. So we're going to select the widest, which is 100 to 3000 hertz. Make sure that the SSB mic select item 1105 is set to mic and that the SSB BFO is set to auto. Setting it to auto below 10 megahertz, it will set it to lower sideband. Above 10 megahertz, it'll set it to upper sideband. I certainly hope that you're enjoying this so far and got something out of it. Please take a moment and give me a like. I quite like that. I quite like that. By popping that thumbs up icon. We're going to start by adjusting menu item 1601, SSB power. You can run this anywhere from 5 to 100 watts. I generally like to keep mine at 80. For purposes of this video, and because I am running into a little dummy load here, it's a diamond dummy load, and it's rated at 15 watts. I'm going to set SSB power down to 10 watts. Now we're going to go up to section 15, starting with menu item 1, which is our equalizer frequency. All of these settings are initial settings, and you should tweak for your own purposes. We're going to set as an initial setting the frequency at 200. We're going to set the level at minus 8 and our bandwidth at 2. We're going to set our equalizer 2 settings to frequency of 1100, a level of plus 5, and a bandwidth of 3. And we're going to set our equalizer 3 settings to a frequency of 2300, our level at a plus 7, and our bandwidth set to 4. The P equalizer settings are used when you're using voice processing. We're going to address all of these in another video. 
For the purposes of this video, we're going to skip them. However, if you really want to set them, go ahead and use the same numbers that I used in the standard equalizer. Now we're going to set our ALC and we're going to start at low and move to high. So that is in 1607 SSB mic gain. And I'm going to set that down to a 10 because we want to be on the low side and move up. So we're going to get out of our menu settings by pressing the function key. So we're going to open up the functions and we're going to find our meter and we're going to set that to ALC. We're going to get out of the functions and you will see that our ALC meter under the underneath VFO A, then it says USB, then it says ALC. As I take my microphone and talk into it, you will see that deflect. Key that and talk. Okay, now back to my menu settings. We start low and move up. I don't know where I'm going to end up. And then back and key the mic. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Now that's a pretty good setting. I'm actually setting about mid range. You'll see the band come up. Test one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. You want it mid scale, so that's about where I was averaging. So that 30 is good for me. Thanks for keeping with this video so far. I spent a lot of time researching these videos, writing up the scripts, editing and posting just the whole packet. I expect that by the time that this video shows up on YouTube, I will have spent a good 25 to 30 hours putting it all together. Even then, I know there may be a mistake or two within. Nevertheless, I certainly would appreciate your consideration of subscribing. I love the pictures. How do I subscribe? To this channel. Now let's continue on. There are two other things that I want to show you, but these are just barely within the scope of this video, but they can be useful in your operations. The first is setting up the voice memory system. You can record up to five voice messages. Each can be up to 20 seconds long. Now we've already set our ALC using the SSB mic gain in menu item 1607. Now we're going to go and open up our menu item 511, which is rec settings, and we are going to enable that. This will add access in the functions settings to the recording functions. And we'll get out of our memory items and press it again and we're going to key through past CW and see we have menu settings. These next few things have to be done fairly quickly as a delay over over a second or two will actually stop the process and you'll have to set things up again. Now once you've been through this once or twice it comes fairly quickly. So we're going to select memory in a flashing rec light will come on then we're going to select a channel then i'm going to hit my push to talk until that flashing rec light becomes a solid one and i'm going to record my message so watch select channel four and click the mic this is a demonstration of recording a voice memory message nd3n this is a demonstration of recording a voice memory message, ND3N. When you're actually on the air, so let's do that, and you want to use your recorded messages, click your F key. I'm in rec sending. Select which channel you want. We want to use channel 4 and select that. This is and your message will play. Recording a voice memory message, ND3N. And we'll get back to the main screen. There's a couple of messages that you probably want to pre-record. And you can put these into any of your message channels. The first is your call sign phonetically, followed by your normal call sign. For me, this would be November Delta 3 November, ND3N. That's if you want to answer a CQ. Uh, the next would be a CQ message. 
So CQ, CQ, CQ from ND3N, November Delta 3, November CQ. This would be useful. Say you're doing it at Parks on the Air, could modify the message to indicate you're doing Parks on the Air. And this way, you wouldn't have to waste your voice. The other thing I wanted to cover was setting up your screen. And so we'll get back to our menu settings by pressing and holding the F key. And we're going to menu item 1301, which is the scope start cycle. You want to have this set to three seconds, meaning that your scope will update every three seconds. I wish they went shorter, but they didn't. I've taken my dummy load off and I have found a 40 meter chat happening. So now I'm gonna put it on scope and you'll see that as I'm sweeping, that sweep is updating every three seconds. So you can see I've got several conversations happening there. So we're just going to kind of narrow in on one of these spikes. Now, another thing you can do uh, while you're here is you can check, set your span, which is SPN. So I'm going to go through so you can see, I can see every conversation that's happening. I like to keep mine a little bit more narrow. And so you can narrow in. That's something you can set for your own purposes. Only one more thing to talk about, but before we get to it, I'd like to ask you to all share. Thank you for sharing. This video with your friends and cohorts who either already own one or are considering getting a Yaesu FT891 rig. Spread the info within your clubs and especially on social media. Before I get into this, I want to get back to our menu options and I want to go to 11.9, which is our transmit bandpass filter. I am going to change it to the narrow one of 400 to 26. One of the best tools available and one that I have purchased for every one of my rigs is the RT Systems radio programming software and this is their website. Now we're going to drill down. First, we're going to pick out our radio type, which is a Yesu. Then we're going to pick out HF. Now we're going to scroll down until we find the 891, which is right here. And you'll see that we have two selections. Uh, you are going to need a cable like this. I wouldn't recommend getting it from RT Systems. Mostly, the price isn't bad, but you're going to have to wait for it to ship and get to you. So what you'll want to do is go to the download page. Once you've downloaded, yeah, make a trip to your nearest Walmart, Target, Best Buy. A lot of uh, gas station stores have them, but the, I think the price will be high. Or you can pick it up on Amazon. So you can see that the cost is $25. You can always come back to this site and re-download this for free. Let's open up the software. It's right here. You'll notice for, I've set each of these at the start of the band. So uh, my first one here is the 80 meter band and where CW starts. Then I've got where voice starts. Same thing with 40 meters, 30 meters. 20 meters, 15, 10, and 6 meter bands. Once this is uploaded to the radio, I can go to my memory channel, so just punch that M slash V, and uh, it'll take me to remember my memories, and I can go right to the band I want. I've uh, set, set the operating modes, so you see CWs and USBs and LSBs in there. Uh, you can certainly add this for any frequencies of interest that you have. Say you log into a net on a regular basis, you can put the net frequency right there. Now I'm also going to go over here to settings and I'm going to show you the radio menu settings. And these are the default settings. And right now, this is, this is what we're going to do. You can see our parametrics are still not set. So we 
Again, we have frequency, level, and bandwidth, but you can tweak your, tweak your parametrics if you want. You can also go specifically to a mode. So SSB, uh, low cut, high cut, slopes. You can see my slope right now is 18. And uh, let's go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to go to communications. And I'm going to get data from radio. It's going to pop up a screen. And I want memory channels and menus. This can take a little while. So instead of making you watch it all the way through, I'll just cut everything out between when I hit the OK button and it's actually completely downloaded. And we've now got everything. So I'm going to go to my settings. So I'm going to go to my operating mode tab and I'll show you that my TX bandpass filter to 4000 to 2600. Now I'm going to put this back on 1000 to 3000 and everything else here is good. Uh, yes, I want to apply the settings. So that is now applied to the program here. Give it a new name. So I'm going to say save as and this is going to be called SSB mode wide. If I was setting it up for ready, I would name it ready. This way I will now have several options. Under my file I can open and I can come in here and I'll be able to pick out whichever mode I'm working and load it up. Cancel that and this time we're going to send the data to the radio. I'm going to send my memory channels and menus. We'll do the time for <laughs> And I'm going to get the get this communications and I'm going to get this little pop-up so I'm going to turn off my radio and turn it back on and click OK and close out of here. So now we're going to go back and look at our menu settings and we're going to look at our SSB TX bandpass filter down there on the bottom and notice that it is now set at 100 to 3000. And for a brief review of the history on this, we originally set it for 100 to 3000. Prior to going through our quick review of RT systems, we came in here and changed it to narrow band. And then I opened up RT systems. We went into the settings and saw that it had been changed to narrow bands. I changed it back to this and reloaded it. And here it is back to normal. For a quick disclaimer, I don't work for RT systems. I'm not sponsored by them, but you know, I'm open if they want to contact me, nor do I receive any kind of consideration from them. I'm simply a fan, and I take every opportunity I have to tell people about them. I've put a link in the video description where you can download the program for FT891. I hope you got something out of this video and are looking forward to the next one, which, by the way, is tentatively titled FT891, CW settings, and more. Also, please enjoy this video, which teaches us how not to take Christmas caroling too seriously. 73 until the next, hey y'all. As always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.